Don't tell Bobby Hurley that his job's in jeopardy because this man is working harder than anybody else in the country right now. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back in. My apologies for the delay on this episode. Uh, stuff came up. We will be good to go. Today will be a doubleheader. We've got basketball this morning, and then later on in the afternoon is going to be the spring game coverage that was supposed to be yesterday. And then we'll be right back on track. But we're talking basketball right now. And what I want to focus on is Bobby Hurley and Bobby Hurley bringing attention, bringing confidence to this program that we haven't had in a handful of years. Like, I feel like you go back to when Hurley first got here and the excitement that you had from a coach that was really starting to pick up steam and someone who was also showing off some good recruiting chops. And he gets to Arizona State. They have some decent teams. They go to the tournament a couple of times. They bring in uh, very talented players like Josh Christopher, who at the time was the highest rated recruit that they had ever gotten. Uh, they had brought in uh, uh, Dort and Bache and Bagley. They they brought in all sorts of different talented players throughout the tenure of Bobby Hurley. But the thing that you just couldn't seem to get was the consistency out of the team. And we're still waiting to get to that point. But right now he's, he's doing all the right things. And it truly feels like the most exciting team that we've seen from him in a handful of years. So it, it started today with Jay acquaintance getting committed to the program. If you missed it, I gave a raw reaction to it yesterday, 15 minutes. If you just want to see my overall thoughts and everything, I'm not going to dive too into detail right now with Quaintance, but we are going to talk about him because it's, it's impossible not to. Quaintance is now the highest rated recruit that Sun Devils basketball has ever gotten. That is not just Bobby Hurley. That is entirely the highest recruit ever. He passes Josh Christopher. He is a 9970 on the uh the composite ranking for uh 24-7. That's acquaintance. Christopher is a 9967. So we just edged him out, but he's every bit the elite player. He's listed as a center at 6'9, 230. I don't know if ASU will play him at center, mainly because they don't. In the, in the last handful of years, they don't really use a center on a consistent basis. Like you, you play a lot of small ball at Arizona state and that's something that needs to change. And it's something that I have called out for the program to get better with because the rebounding has been such an issue for this team. And acquaintance brings that aspect to this team as he brings the ability to be a strong rebounder. But where I'm curious how they use him is more of like a forward regardless this is a strong player this is someone that can go up eat off the glass get the tough to get points no matter where he lines up regardless of that though what this shows me is that Bobby Hurley very much understands the situation that he and the program are in right now getting acquaintance is is huge in a lot of different ways so beyond the actual getting him on the court situation beyond the beyond the the actual talent that he is it speaks to it speaks to the direction this program is going in right now and 
obviously it's going in a good direction, but it started this off season. The last few years, ASU has just kind of been getting by. Like they had that uh, 2020 team that unfortunately did not get to go dancing, even though it was a very talented team with Kamani Lawrence and Remy Martin in their primes. But since then, they've just been kind of treading water. Bobby Hurley is clearly understanding that like, hey, I got to get us back to where we were. That's what the addition of acquaintance tells me. We'll talk more about the recruiting class as a whole a little bit later in the podcast because it's not just acquaintance here. But for me, what it means for ASU is that Hurley understands, hey, there's there might be a time clock on my career at Arizona State. I might not get another season after this if I cannot put together a good squad. Like if he comes out and this team falls flat again, he might get fired especially knowing that there's going to be a change to the athletic director position eventually. Who knows when that's happening at this point, but it's it's a really good look for Hurley that, one, he can still recruit because he's always been a good recruiter. He's, he's always brought in very talented kids, but it shows that he can still recruit and it shows that he's selling this program in a way that we haven't really seen before because this is a top 10 recruiting class that ASU is bringing in. You're curious what Quaintance does for you year one. The one thing that kind of has me more excited about Quaintance than anything else, though, is his potential to be a long-term building block because since he reclassified, he's only 16 years old. He'll be 17 by the time the uh, season rolls around. He reclassified to be eligible for this year's class but that also means, according to like the NCAA rules, or it might be the NBA rules, is he will not be eligible for the lottery until 2026. So ASU could have him for two years. And I know that doesn't sound like a long time, but in college basketball, that's a long time. That allows you to be able to pull in guys through the transfer portal, through the recruiting class. It allows you to make sure that your window stays open a little bit. Because that was the problem with some of these past ASU teams is like, yeah, they brought in really talented players, but they go one and done. It's the nature of most of college basketball, but what Arizona State doesn't have compared to other schools is the leverage to be able to replace those five stars year after year after year. You get acquaintance for two years, that should, in theory, make it a little bit easier to continue recruiting the program. It's... It's a really good selling point. And I think that Bobby Hurley also understands that. I think that Bobby Hurley knows that a player like Quaintance is going to be a magnet for some of these other kids. And they could see Arizona State as some kind of lightning rod. And it's like, hey, they might have something special here. And you want to go to Arizona State. And there's all sorts of different stuff that we offer, uh, both athletically and academically. There's a lot here to gain, and if Arizona State is able to build themselves, I mean, that 2020 team, I think they had a shot to go to the Sweet 16. I'm not ready to say that just yet, but on paper, this is a very talented basketball team that should be able to make a lot of a lot of noise during the season. For what it's worth, it also doesn't seem coincidental that this is coming with the move to the Big 12 Conference. It feels like this is a good way to reset everything and start with a fresh slate, a fresh plate, move forward. That's kind of where I'm at right now with this move to get acquaintance. It's a good recruiting class though. And he's also doing a lot of work with the transfers. We're going to go over those a little bit. We're going to talk about who's in it, who could be a very important piece for the team. There is a returning name that you will recognize if you did not see the news by chance. But more than anything, what I want to talk about is how Bobby Hurley is really building this team and how important this recruiting class and this transfer cycle has been and will be for the future, not just of ASU, but for Bobby Hurley's tenure as a coach, period. We're going to talk about that in detail in just one moment here. This is the Locked On Sunnables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Guys, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app are actually going to go down the closer it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater events, and anything else that you can think of. There's flash deals so that you can save with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Zone deals will allow you to save even more when you choose the section and let Game Time choose the seats. They have an all in pricing toggle feature that shows you the total upfront with no surprise hidden fees at checkout. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you know what to expect when you get there. And their lowest price guarantee means Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Also, want to talk to you about our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and, and, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. If you're watching sports all day on Fox or ESPN or anywhere else where you find that you're having to turn down the TV because of all the shouting, make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel provided to you to bring the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get back into our conversation We've got a really good recruiting class that's coming in. But not just that, we have a a really good transfer class that is coming in too. And the transfer class is, to me, the more interesting facet here. With this transfer class, you aren't necessarily... What's, what's the way I want to say this? you're not relying on the transfer class the way you have the last few years to build the success. With that said, the transfers you got are very good. You got BJ Freeman, who is coming in from, where's he coming? Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And he is a four-star transfer. And you got Alston Mason, who is coming in from Missouri State. Both of those guys are... Uh, going to be, well, Freeman's more of a power forward at 6'6". Six, six. Al- Alston Mason is going to be closer to that uh, Frankie Collins player for you as a 6'1 point guard. He might be the player who runs the point now that Collins is gone. They got a transfer uh, center in Bashir Jih- uh, Jihad. Don't know too much about him. All I know is he's 6'9", 240. And the familiar name, Austin Nunez. And New- Nunez played at Arizona State his freshman year. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. He showed off some really good deep shooting potential. I remember watching him as a freshman, and he would come off. He's like the seventh, eighth man off the bench for the team. And it just felt like when he shot from deep, he was going to make it. Having that kind of player for you off the bench was huge. And it, it was something that Arizona State really valued on that 2021-22 team was you had good point scorers with Desmond Cambridge Jr. and Frankie Collins was solid and Devin Cambridge was solid. But having Austin Nunez off the bench was something that was very pivotal for ASU to have. And it's something they didn't have last year was bench points. Now, I don't know that Nunez comes back to this program and is a starter for the team, but he should be able to slide right back into that role 
as that rotational shooter for the team who can be be explosive from behind the arc. Very excited about him. There's something else that that tells me with Nunez, though, and I wanted to talk about this more specifically with Nunez, and that's that Bobby Hurley is is really starting to build the reputation reputation yeah reputation of this program up because a guy like Nunez who transfers after one year goes to Ole Miss doesn't have the year that he was hoping to have but enters the transfer portal and basically says yeah I'm not taking visits anywhere else I'm going back to Arizona State that tells me that Nunez saw another option didn't like it and knew that what Arizona State had was a good option was a good fit, and he decides to come back. That's really telling of what Bobby Hurley is trying to paint the perception of this program is like, yeah, we are building something here. We would love for you to come back and be a part of it. The fact that Nunez didn't even want to see any other programs and that he only wanted to go back to Arizona State tells me that he holds ASU in high regard. It's it's really cool, honestly, to see that a guy like Nunez is so set on like, no, 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 no. I want to go back to Arizona state. I don't want to go. I don't want to visit anywhere else. Arizona state is my home. And then bringing in the small school guys too, BJ Freeman, Alston Mason, uh, uh, Bashir Jihad is coming from ball state. You're getting, you're getting these guys an opportunity to play at a power five, power six, power four level, whatever the amount of conferences going to be at this point they're building something they're building a reputation of hey come here compete see what you can do the recruiting class though this is where i feel asu is really putting a lot of a lot of their talent for next year into like i said it, it feels like the last few years it's really been predicated on whether or not the uh basketball the or not the basketball the transfer portal was going to be kind to ASU or not. If if they attacked the transfer portal successfully, they were going to do good. If they didn't get as many players they wanted, they weren't going to play as good. 2021-22, you caught lightning in a bottle in a bottle with the Cambridge brothers, Warren Washington, Frankie Collins. They matched with uh DJ Horn and some of the other guys on the team. They had a solid team. Last year, you just didn't have that. This year, ASU did go through the portal. They've got four guys coming in, and they could add some more guys. I'm not sure when the portal officially closes for basketball. But they are really building this program through this upcoming recruiting class. It's not just Jaden Quaintance, the five-star, the consensus five-star, the highest recruit ASU has ever gotten, the number eight player in the nation. Their other three recruits that are coming in they are also top 200 recruits. Two of them are in the top 90. The interesting thing is all three of them are in the Valley. Amir Ali is tied with Sammy Ine for a 91 overall on the uh, recruiting ranking for 24-7 by itself. They are both forwards. Amir Ali is more of your small forward at 6'8", 175. Sammy Ine is your power forward at 6'8", 230. So him and Jaden Quaintance are very similar in size. And then you've got a shooting guard named Bo Aldrich who was coming in. Uh, they had a kid decommit today. And of course, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. But you still are bringing in three guys who are all top 200 players in the nation to go along with Quaintance. For the first time in a while, it feels like Arizona State is building their basketball program with their own homegrown talent. And very literally homegrown, three of your four guys are uh, Valley kids. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Jaden Quaintance was also a Valley kid and then moved out to North Carolina. Someone fact check me on that. I'm pretty sure he, at, at least at some point in time, was living out in Arizona. But you're you're getting the very literal and figurative homegrown talent right now. You're building this team with your recruits, not with transfers. And your other strong positions 
are guys who are returning from last year who transferred. Adam Miller says he's back. As of right now, Sean Phillips is back. Sure, you lost some guys. You lose uh, Frankie Collins. You lose Kamari Lands. I, I think Zane Meeks left. It might have been... I can't remember. But you are losing guys, but I would tell you, outside of Frankie Collins, you're bringing back the more important guys who at least had big roles for the team. Jemiah Neal also transferred. That one hurts. But having Sean Phillips and and Adam Miller back, really big for the team, having these transfers come in who were highly productive at their schools, really good. But more than anything, to me, it's this recruiting class that really puts an emphasis on how important and how instrumental it's going to be for ASU success in 2024. These are the guys that in theory should be able to get you back on track. And it really goes to the credit of Bobby Hurley for the way that he recruits the program. There's not a lot of instances where you have such a bad program and you just recruit your tail off and get in so many talented players. Four kids in the top 200 in the nation said, yeah, I want to go play there. I want to stay home. I want to be the highest recruit they ever had. I want to transfer. He's He is pushing this program in ways that I don't know that we've seen out of Bobby Hurley before. And there's all sorts of stuff behind the scenes that's able to really sell this program. And one of them we have to have a big conversation about. Because it might bring exposure to the program that we've never seen before. We'll talk about it in more detail in just one moment. This is Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I have been told that I have a competitive side. And it's okay. I, I know I have that competitive side. But we all have that competitive side because it's who we are. We got to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there's so much good stuff in this game. Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get from unique stickers. You can trade with friends to compete, to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel boards with, Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash your buildings or heist their bolts and more. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day. Consistently changing tournaments and challenges a ton include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot Penchico machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something to do and discover on Monopoly Go. So get off the bench, download it now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. One more time, wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's wrap up this edition of the pod with one of the most intriguing developments that I've ever seen for, for ASU sports, let alone basketball. And that's that Bobby Hurley, and I'm going to read the report verbatim from Jeff Goodman. Bobby Hurley is in talks with major Hollywood producers and streaming platforms to create a made for TV docuseries leveraging Hurley's personal NIL success as a player and coach to forge Fortune 500 brand partnerships with the intent of future increase, of course it cuts it off, intent to further increase the visibility of the men's basketball program. That's a lot to chew on. Essentially, what he is trying to do is, hey, 
I'm sure that there's a lot of places that would love to see behind the scenes of what goes on in a college basketball program, what you see in the locker room, in the film room, before games, after games. I don't know what it could look like. It could look like a whole slew of different things. What I do know it looks like is being able to have these guys take a look at the program and they go, huh, that's that's really cool. Guys who may not have ASU on their radars now tune in because Netflix has the Bobby Hurley series and they see what Bobby Hurley is all about. And they go, hey, maybe I should check out Arizona State. It also brings a lot of opportunities for NIL because people are going to see the program. They're going to see that people are interested in it and they're going to want to put their money in it so the product is better. And quite frankly, this, this movement for NIL right now feels like it's really steamrolling for Arizona State. Quaintance, there's all sorts of stuff that could have led him to committing to Arizona State. But there is a part of me that believes that he is being being told by the program that things are only going to get better. Who knows if he was promised money? Who knows if he was promised any kind of benefits? What I do know is there's clearly something at the program that sold him over places like Kentucky, where he decommitted because John Calipari left. There's something going on at Arizona State that's getting these kids interested. You bring in such a strong recruiting class and you bring it in from the Valley. That tells me something. That tells me you're activating the Valley, as Kenny Dillingham would like to say. It also tells me that there's there's a lot of moving pieces that these kids are seeing that these recruiters are seeing to be able to bring the kids in. There's something in the water out in Tempe, Arizona. And I don't know if it's NIL related. I don't know if the stars are aligning. There's something going on that's getting everybody interested and invested. Kids are coming to this program. Talented kids are coming to this program. Kenny Dillingham's bringing in four-star recruits. Bobby Hurley just brought in the highest recruit ASU has ever received. He is putting together one of the best recruiting classes of the last 10, 20 years. He is doing his best to leverage the program to get a docuseries that would bring so much attention from across the country. You would have 15, 16 year old kids that are trying to figure out their future that would go, let's check this out. Why not? Let's see what ASU is about. Maybe, maybe ASU is cool and I want to go there. There's a lot going on at Arizona state and there's a lot that Bobby Hurley has been doing behind the scenes to be able to get you to this point. We've seen it with Jaden Quaintance. We've seen it with the recruiting class, with the transfers that are coming in. Now you're potentially getting some Hollywood magic going on here. It's, it's so much to take in, but it's a very good thing to be able to take in. It feels like there's a lot of good things that are steamrolling for this program right now. And as you throw this snowball down the mountain and it starts to pile up, it's, it's just getting better and better. When we found out Quaintance was visiting the program last week, it was a pipe dream that he would commit, and then he did commit. And now you hear that Bobby Hurley is doing everything he can to bring the most exposure to the basketball program that I think you've ever seen. There's a lot going on with the basketball program right now. And it could be a lot of things. It could be as simple as Bobby Hurley's just trying to save his job. It, it, it really could be. But I don't think that's, that's the only factor here. There's clearly something that the boosters are investing into, that the coaching staff's investing into, that these kids are investing into. They're waking up the sleeping giant that we've heard for years about Arizona State sports. There's something going on. Whatever it is, I'm here for it. But there's a lot going on with the basketball program right now by itself. 
We just wrapped up spring practices for football. We'll be talking about that later on in the day. I appreciate you guys for the patience and the understanding. We'll be back on a regular schedule. We got plenty to talk about during the offseason. I am setting up some really awesome stuff behind the scenes for you guys to get you through what could be a very long summer. So now has never been a better time to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. You can stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, making us your first listen, and a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Like I said, guys, we're going to be back a little later on in the afternoon as we go ahead and talk about spring ball. We're going to talk about how the how the spring game looked, how the practices looked, the biggest takeaways, and what's next for the program. I'll see you guys there. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun.